Dixon Talks. Hello and welcome to this inspiring episode of Takes and Talks, the story of a champion, presented to you by Cinema for a Cause. I came, I saw, I conquered. Dear viewers, if someone is asked to write a one-liner to describe the illustrious and glorious career of our today's guest, I bet there can't be a better one than this. She was the golden girl of the 70s era, an internationally acclaimed table tennis champion. Rupa Banerjee was not merely a sports person. In those days, when Indian women, especially Bengali women, were not encouraged to take up sports as their career, she literally took the entire nation by her storm with her remarkable performance in sports. Thus, she was indeed a symbol of women empowerment in her own way. Today in Takes and Talks, we are deeply honored to have her as our guest. So, dear viewers, please welcome Rupa Banerjee and let's try to know some uh, memories of those golden days from this golden girl of Bengal. Let's welcome none other than Rupa Banerjee. Hello, ma'am. How are you? I'm welcome fine, to Takes you. and Talks. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, we are really, we are really honored to have you as our guest. Actually, I'm honored to be here and to be invited to say a few things and uh, it makes me feel very good it's uh, delightful thank you dear viewers let me tell you that mrs banerjee has joined us from canada ma'am what's the time there and how is the weather in canada uh, the weather is quite good actually because it's summer uh, uh -huh. so we are getting a lot of sunshine some days mm -hmm. are very hot um, but uh, we are not used to hot weather, so we really okay. enjoy when it is so. Um, so everybody's out uh, on the streets and in the parks. Um, it's, a, it's a lovely time. Okay. It's 10.30 in the morning, I guess, right? It's about 10.30 in the morning. 10.30 yes. in the morning. Okay. So let's hope that you'll have a great evening together. Uh, for you, it's just the beginning of the day, and for us, it's an evening. Right. Right, I believe so. So, dear viewers, now is the time to welcome the very backbone of our cinema for our cause and the ideator and moderator of this Takes and Talks series, none other than Mr. Abhishek Ganguly. Hello, Mr. Ganguly, welcome to Takes and Talks. Thank you, Shorvista, and it's a great honor to see Rupa from Toronto joining Indeed. us in this episode of Takes and Talks. Thank you, Mr. Ganguly, for inviting me here. I'm very honored and uh, it's it's really delightful to, to be here on your show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sure, Mr. Yes, before we proceed. So, dear viewers, as I always say, that Takes and Talks is your very own show. So, we are incomplete without your participation. So, do send us your reactions and please send us your comments and suggestions. And please do not forget to send your questions to Mrs. Rumba Banerjee, which will be duly answered by her towards the end of the show. Now, over to you, Mr. Ganguly. Thank you, Shormishta. You gave a fantastic introduction to Rupa. She indeed is the golden girl from Bengal and making India proud in the international map of table tennis. Uh, Rupa, we will have some questions for you which will trace back your journey, how you began, how you rose to the pinnacle of table tennis, what was your inspiration. So we start with, as Shorbishta rightly said, in those days, you know, like the Indian woman was not that sporty, you know, they never used to go out of their house, mainly maybe they used to get educated and then married off, become a homemaker. But you, as a Bengali woman, you know, the icon of women's empowerment, went out, chose up sports, table tennis as a profession and passion. And you were playing, you know, like full, full go, representing Bengal, then India, all over the world. So how did you really overcome all the hurdles or the challenges or the society or the familial pressures which were there? If so, 
how how was it possible um it was mainly possible because i come from a, a sports family uh, but okay. um, you're right you're very right that uh, there was there were pressures from everywhere um but uh, because uh, in my era uh, women were expected to stay home to to uh, sing or to dance uh, or to um, to do cooking uh, but uh, because my family in my family everybody played sports so it was a little bit easier for me to go out and uh, and pursue my table tennis um, so that's how it happened and the hurdles that i uh, had to overcome is uh, it was that the nearby uh, neighbors were very interested in knowing where i was going uh, when i was coming and that really bothered me but when i came to canada there was no such things and I, that was eliminated here and i was uh, free and i felt good and i played well and so you know there are pros and cons everywhere so that's how it happened but um, but i can only say that uh, my family has helped me a lot correct okay. and you know those days playing with men uh, was maybe that also was a challenge you know like playing and then especially men dominated the sports field so did that also pose as a challenge for you yes uh, the men dominated but uh, very soon after i started i was also playing against the men and yeah. and uh, luckily <laughs> and i was winning. also beating them <laughs> okay <laughs> so so you know Uh, there comes a time when uh, people realize that oh no you know you you can't be prejudiced against women because she's playing and she's beating us so she is just as good you know yeah yeah that was really and you proved that you know maybe in many cases and in many fields women are better and you know that was the mark or the beginning of a champion beating men and that too in the field of sports remarkable So Rupa why did you take up table tennis like why was your you know passion focused on to table tennis actually i was not to play table tennis i liked tennis better okay uh, but okay. so many members of my family played tennis so my mother said oh everybody is playing tennis now why don't you play table tennis i was a little girl and she made the decision well i'm glad she did Uh, I didn't do too badly in table tennis either. Um so but then um uh, my passion was for tennis. I I liked tennis. I used to go to DKS uh club uh, which was founded by by my grandfather uh late uh, Harshnath Mukherjee and okay. uh, uh, that's where I used to play a little bit of tennis also. I was very young. Um uh, but I really liked tennis. To this day also I I love tennis. uh but it was my mother's decision and i'm glad okay. she made that decision <laughs> yes you pursued your studies also while you know having a very illustrious sports career so you know like because later on you have had a very illustrious corporate career as well uh, how did you balance between your studies and the sports and the table tennis and that too you know while playing nationally and internationally where the asking rate is quite high uh Yes um uh, the problem was that uh, in our schools and colleges college uh, they were not considering uh, sports that much uh, yeah. like over here uh, my employer really encouraged me to go and play and if i were late to go to work they said don't worry we want you to become national champion but in india uh um, in schools and college uh it was not possible but uh, it was easy for me i never studied in the evening ever uh because i was too okay. tired when i came home from ymca yeah, yeah. or uh, from exhibition matches or from tournaments i was dead tired I, all i did was to eat my dinner have a shower and go to bed so okay. um it was not but uh, two months prior to my exams i never used to touch my table tennis bat i used to just study 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 and i got through 
so it was okay <laughs> you balanced your way through and yes. two months you know like prior to your exams you totally managed your time so well that you were focused from the table tennis table and the racket onto the you know study arena fantastic uh, tell me rupa you know you rose to a very great height nationally you were the national champion and internationally too the you know the the demand the kind of expectations on you were really himalayan and humongous you know everyone the media the entire national team the coaches the trainers uh, the government they were all expecting you to perform so well so what kind of stress were you under you know when you were performing at such a high level internationally uh, it was very stressful first of all we didn't have a coach uh, we uh, were not trained properly that we were supposed to but uh, given uh, given that uh, we tried our best uh, in in calcutta when when i lived in calcutta there were very uh, few opportunities uh, the managers tried their best uh, mr prabhu mitra mr gopinath ghosh uh, mr robi chatterjee mr late uh, mr sharaj ghosh uh, they were all mr b n lahi late mr brehan lahiri they were all very good co uh, managers but um, B mr b n lahiri used to coach us just before the bengal championship Uh, or uh, when we played the national champion or when we went for the nationals he used to coach us just one month but i okay. have no idea why he was not retained to coach for the whole year because he was such an excellent coach but there was no place so even though our managers tried very hard there there was no scope so uh, that's what it was so when we played the international matches it was so hard because uh, you know the tables were faster uh, the the flooring was different you felt like you were going to fall down um, so you know uh, for a little while you needed time to adjust whereas you're losing points in between so sure. but all these things happened but we were young and we crossed the bridge as it came but i have no regret i think that uh, everything was okay lovely uh, you know our research team uh, kind of gathered some photographs from you and from other sources and we have tried to weave a small audio visuals on the wow moments of this golden girl from bengal who really made bengal india proud internationally and canada too when you played for canada so we will just see a small audio visual on the wow moments of rupa Shobhita, can we have the audio visual, please? Rupa Banerjee, the table tennis queen of India of the 1970s, making India proud with her table tennis strokes, winning laurels nationally and internationally, and also conquering hearts. Coming from a Bengali family, breaking all stereotypes, Rupa was indeed. women's empowerment personified an example of women in the world of sports her stint as a table tennis player for canada is also a noteworthy feather in her cap Takes and Talks takes great pleasure in having Rupa face to face in the virtual Facebook live show The Story of a Champion as on the 11th of July 2021 Sunday Indian Standard Time 8 to 8:40 p.m. Canadian Time 10:30 a.m. Watch Rupa win over the match point at The Story of a Champion on the cinema for a cause facebook page at takes and talks so oh, that was really giving those moments uh, from the audio visual we could see the kind of different very very remarkable moments of your career which you have gone through fantastic how do you feel when you are on a flashback 
uh, you know, like a road like this where you see, the, how do you feel? I feel great. I feel great that I was able yeah. to uh, <laughs> play and travel and play hard and uh, matches that were uh, crucial uh, to tackle them. Um, so I feel very good about it. Fantastic. It has been an exciting journey for this golden girl. We are on Takes and Talks, the story of a champion. We have Rupa right here from Toronto. Rupa, just now we've got the news. We have a guest who is just kind of joining us here. And let it be a surprise. We have our guest, please. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Abhishek. <laughs> thank you, Abhishek. Oh, lovely, lovely. Thank you, Sir Mr. Oh, Rupu Didi. Uh, just to... uh, he is my, Onutosh is my Our guest brother. here, you know, who is also a, very, 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 talented very, very famous boy. celebrity from Kolkata. Exactly. A uh, very famous celebrity the from Kolkata. Talented, yeah, he is the most talented boy in our family. He's, uh, he's oh, great. great guy. It's story. great to hear from you these words, <laughs> especially. <laughs> I'm nothing <laughs> comparing you, you people. No. Love you. <clears throat> anyway, Love for you. our viewers, thank you. Yeah, for our viewers, Onutosh, Onutosh Mukhopadhyay has just joined us from Kolkata. Onutosh himself is an actor, he's a singer, and he's a creator. <clears throat> and the biggest introduction today to Onutosh is. You know, claim to fame, why he is in this show is he is Rupa's younger cousin brother. Odutosh, thank you for sparing <laughs> your time. Uh, you just came back from shooting and joined us. Thank you. And it was yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's my pleasure to be here. <laughs> yeah. Odutosh, uh, I'm very uh, much happy I... today because Rupa is with us. Okay. okay. I'm happy Odutosh because has... you are with us. <clears throat> and, um... Correct, correct. Thank you for uh, for being here and that you, you've just come back from your uh, movie shooting and uh, you still were able to make it to the studio. Thank you. <laughs> love you, brother. Love you so much. I love you too. <laughs> lovely, lovely brother and sister exchanges happening at Takes and Talks in the story of a champion. Onutosh, I have a very small question for you. Uh, when okay. Rupa was conquering <clears throat> the world, when Rupa was right. a national champion and internationally she was really creating news everywhere. You were much right. younger to her and you were a toddler, but you were all awestruck right. about her success. So if you reminisce back, if you travel back in time, what sentiments come to your mind now? Now, uh, frankly speaking, I have very little memories of being with Rupodidi when she was a champion because, as you said, I was a toddler at that time. Most of the memories have faded away right now, but still what I remember is that uh, whenever I used to went with her, go out, uh, she got a lot of admirations and lots of fan following was always there. And at times I've seen in my own eyes, she used to get mobbed by her fans. And she okay. was the pride of India, the champion, and the golden girl of Bring Bengal. So I used to get inspired very much uh, that my own elder sister <laughs> has achieved so much and made India and Bengal and in, uh, especially India proud all over the world. Absolutely. That's a very proud brother speaking from Kolkata about the <laughs> champion of India who's in Toronto. So another Toronto. thing I must mention here, another thing I must yeah. mention here, to me, Rupodidi is a trendsetter or pathfinder. She paved the way for many, uh, for many women, especially during 1970s. It was very difficult for women to come out and play games with men. She showed the path. So hats off to Rupodidi. <laughs> and a big, thanks to Texan Talks, a big thanks to Texan Talks, a big thanks to Texan Talks and Cinema for a Cause for organizing this beautiful evening interview session with Rupa Didi. I'm grateful to you all people. And Rupa Didi, no lots problem. of love and regards. Thank you so Always much. stay happy and healthy. We all love you. Keep Thank smiling. You. I do too. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, everybody. For your time. We will catch up with you very, very soon. Thank you. Okay. Rupa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Rupa, uh, we go on to the next question. Uh, how did you get chosen for Bengal and then India? How did it start off? 
Um, we had to play tournaments, um, so okay. many tournaments in a year uh, in, in, in Bengal uh, to prove ourselves to, to make it to the team. So um, I was beating uh, very early in my career. I started uh, playing first in uh, DKS, then I went to YMCA, and then I started playing tournaments. And uh, very quickly, I started beating uh, uh, the champion, uh, Robin Arroy. And, uh, and then uh, in every tournament, I used to meet her in the finals, and I used to be able to beat her. So they chose me in Bengal team. And then when I went uh, uh, representing Bengal team, I went to play the nationals. And there I did very mm -hmm. well also. Um, I used to beat some of the top players and uh, I was chosen for India team. That's how you are chosen. You have to play tournaments, Correct. you have to beat the players, good players, uh, yes, yes. to yes. Make, it, make yourself worthwhile for the team. Absolutely. And uh, if you just again, you know, rack your brains and think about which has been your most memorable national title match, you know, where you were playing for the national championship to be the national champion. One such memory of one match, which still, you know, kinds of, if you just glide down the memory lane, it's very bright in your memory. And that's when I won the Canadian national championship. I had the toughest draw. Okay. Um, what happened is okay. Violeta Nashukaitis used to be the queen of Canadian table tennis. And uh, mm -hmm. on her side, she had uh, a few players that were not highly ranked. But on the other side, all of us were there. Like Irena Choda, she used to uh, be a world-class player from Yugoslavia. She was our uh, coach's wife, uh, uh, Zlatko Chodis' wife, she came and uh, stayed in uh, Toronto. And then uh, Marianne Damunkos, who was a great player too, uh, and, uh, and myself, we were all on the same side. So I had to beat uh, Gloria Nash uh, I had to beat uh, Gloria Sue in the three quarters, uh, Marianne in the semis, uh, sorry, quarters, then uh, Irena Chodis in the semi-final and then finally I met Violetta and okay. uh, it was uh, it, it especially memorable because I had to play all the top players to be, to come to the finals and then I beat uh, Violetta Nashukaitis and it was a splendid uh, feeling that I mm -hmm. not only won the national championship but I beat them all on, on the way to the finals and and tackled the final, final round also. So it was Fantastic. very good. And my husband was just, he was so happy when I called him from Calgary. He was very happy and uh, he was jumping with joy. He wasn't with me at okay. that tournament, but he was okay. extremely happy. Okay, okay. You have represented India internationally too. You have traveled all over the world, you know, with the Indian flag. Uh, I've seen those photographs. So any, uh, you know, one memory while representing or donning the Indian colors, which still, you know, fills up your heart with a lot of pride. Yes, I, I remember in China uh, when we went and we were uh, doing our uh, initial march pass, uh, and then we all the all the players were standing, and uh, Mr. Chow Wen Lai came, late Chow Wen Lai came, and he saw us in our saris, and he was so okay. uh, happy to see us in our saris. He started speaking in English. They don't do that in the, in China. They speak know, yeah. in Chinese. He was educated yeah. in U.S. He knows English uh, very well, but. In China, they don't speak in English, but he was so excited. He shook our hands and he uh, he appreciated us wearing saris. And uh, and I, I think that that's something for me to remember for life because uh, he was such a great personality. And um, 
Mao Zedong couldn't come because he was very ill, but his wife was there. Uh, but uh, uh, but I remember uh, Chao and Lai talking to us in English and appreciating and saying, you all look good. Okay. As they say, the Indian woman looks the most, you know, you know, gorgeous in a sari. And oh, that again beautiful. was proven. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. That's sari is so beautiful. I mean, I love it on others. I have difficulty managing it, but I love mm -hmm. it on others and uh, there's nothing like uh, an Indian woman or any woman wearing saris. It's beautiful. Very true, very true. Uh, Rupa, you had been head to head with your compatriot, the famous Indian TT champ of those times, Indu Puri, who was a great personal friend of yours also. Many matches, many memories. Uh, do you have any remembrance about, you know, the Indu Puri tryst with you? Uh, sure, I do. Yes, she was yeah. a good friend of mine, uh, away from the table. Uh, but uh, when we were playing against each other, of course, she wanted to kill me and I wanted to kill her. That's <laughs> she was natural. an opponent. Yeah. That's only natural. Absolutely. Yeah, but yeah. Um, but uh, Indu uh, and I played hundreds of uh, finals Matches. against mm -hmm. each other. Uh, because uh, in Calcutta, we ha had to play so many, many tournaments. And I was always meeting her in the finals. Uh, we had mm. to play district matches, finals again, we were meeting. Uh, we had to play zonal matches. Uh, I think four of them were compulsory, if I, if I remember correctly. And of course, I was meeting her because we were number one and two. Um, so I played against her at least 100 times. She has beaten me twice. Once, oh, <laughs> she has beaten me twice. Uh, once in okay. Customs House, a long, long time ago, and uh, once at the National Championship. Um, so these are the only two times she beat me, but I have beaten her all the other times, at least 98 times that I've played okay. against her. Um, so, <laughs> you know, uh, if, if somebody plays somebody for hundreds of times, uh, yes. uh, you can have a bad day and you can uh, lose to a person uh, one or two times. Absolutely. And absolutely. Uh, statistically, I don't think that's a bad result at all. Not at all, not at all. <laughs> uh, uh, tell me, Rupa, before you go for a match or used to go for a match, did you study your opponent's strengths and weaknesses? Like, how was yes. it done? How did you plan for a match? Yeah, if you could just yes. tell us. Yes. Um, if a hitter, I, I would just... Mm -hmm within the first few points, I would see, you see, uh, a hitter can be a good hitter, but may not be hitting very well on that particular day. Um, mm -hmm. So I would study if the person is hitting very well that day. If, the, if I found that the person is hitting very well, then I'd slow the person down. So I would okay. play more chopping the chop to slow the person down so that mm -hmm. they don't get the chance of hitting all the time because I was a hitter and if somebody hit better than me then of course the result would be uh, negative for me so mm. that's how I used to do I used to check who's playing how on that particular day when I'm playing the person if the person okay. was hitting very hard I'd slow her down okay okay as you very rightly said that uh, every player you know has their share of losing also. So any particular match you remember or regret of having, you know, losing after a very close fight? Any particular match? Yes, I do. I remember I played against Insukna. Uh, she was okay. a world-class player. Uh, I played her in CNE uh, championship. In, um, it's a major championship in Toronto. I was so close to beating her. And uh, yet, I it slipped away from my from my luck. Um, okay. But if I had beaten her there, it would be a, a great, uh, great accomplishment. Okay, okay. Uh, you know, like you were obviously the national champion in India. Then you went to Canada. You became the Canadian champion. The training and the overall regime and the coaching style obviously changed. So how would you compare, you know, what kind of a uh, upscaling was it? 
if you compare the Indian situation then and the Canadian situation as it prevailed at that time of training, coaching, everything? Um, coaching in Canada was uh, very good uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to coaching in India. We never had any coaching in India, like I told you before. Um, yes, yes. Uh, there, was, there were no coaches. Or, um, uh, we, we really suffered uh, because as international player, I should have practiced uh, under a coach uh, at least uh, three, four hours, but that didn't happen. But when I came to Canada, we had uh, Zlatko Chodas first, and then Zoran Kasanovic, both from Yugoslavia. And uh, we were, our games were monitored by them. They made us run, we had physical training. Uh, we had to run, we had to do uh, freehand exercises. Uh, it was very different here. And therefore, my game went up so much. I really played very well in Canada. Uh, people that I could never beat before, I was beating them three straight or uh, uh, two straight. And uh, my, I was so happy that uh, because of the practice, a lot of practice that I needed uh, and, and the good coaching, uh, my, my performance was way better than it was in India. Okay, okay. Uh, Rupa, if you analyze yourself as a table tennis player, uh, everyone has strengths and weaknesses. So what were your strengths, what were your best strokes? My best stroke was uh, forehand a flat kill okay. and, uh, and backhand jab. I used to play from close to the table. So if I, oh. anybody uh, top spin, I would just block it. And uh, okay. if anybody hit, then I would also either counter from my forehand side or backhand side or the, just jab mm -hmm. it. So uh, that was my uh, biggest strength. Uh, playing close to the table has uh, a lot of advantage because mm -hmm. uh, I, I was not a defensive player. My defense was not that great. So if I fell behind the, uh, the table, far behind the table, it would be difficult for me. So I stayed close to the table and either hit forehand or countered forehand or uh, played backhand a jab. And um, th th those were my strengths. Uh, just, uh, you know, flashback and just think that you were just going to enter maybe the national champion title match or an international uh, very, very important match. The first, uh, the last two minutes preparatory time just before a match, what was playing in Rupa Banerjee's mind? You know, how did you mentally prepare for a very, very difficult game? Because mental fitness with physical fitness is also a champion. You know, it has to be one of champion's biggest qualities. So how did Rupa get ready for an international or a national title match? Just two minutes before mentally getting prepared. Yes, uh, mental preparation and physical preparation uh, both go hand in hand. And uh, I, I remember that I uh, was playing a match in Calcutta against Park Mira. Uh, she was world's number three in, uh, at the time. And uh, at first I thought, oh my goodness, you know, she's such a great player. But when I went to the table, I played my best and I was able to beat her actually. Um, okay. the people were very, very happy uh, in front of Calcutta crowd. There were like, I don't know how many thousands of people were there. They were <laughs> so, so happy to see me win against her. And it was a great match. And uh, Jagannath from, um, uh, from Indian team was coaching me for that particular tournament. For, for that particular match. And uh, the Calcutta crowd started uh, saying, Joy Jagannath, Joy Jagannath, you know, Joy okay. Jagannath, <laughs> you know. Uh, so uh, they, they were very happy. And I was very happy to be able to beat uh, Park Mira. And my mental preparation was that, uh, never mind how good she is, I will put out my best. Uh, let me mm -hmm. play my best. And if I win, I win. 
I, I really didn't think I was going to win because she was world's number three. But um, I thought uh, that let me play my best. And if I can beat world number three, then so be it. If I can't, that's great too. My experience will be with me forever. And I lovely, beat her. Lovely. Okay. <laughs> uh, tell me, Rupa, we've all heard about politics and sports, red tapism, uh, favoritism. Are these myths or reality? What has been the Rupa experience to all this? Um, I didn't particularly uh, face anything against me really as such. Uh, okay. But but I know that there is politics. It's not a myth. There, there are politics uh, in sports, in table tennis also, uh, because I, I will name one. Uh, Usha Sundaraj, uh, in my, my era, Usha Sundaraj was a great player. And she was dropped from the team um, mm. because I heard that the uh, TTFI management uh, had uh, some kind of difficulties with her father. And so okay. uh, she was dropped. I mean, how is... How does that uh, even happen? I mean, she's a good player. If she played for the team, it would be good for the Indian team. But uh, because of somebody's differences with her father, that she was dropped, I, I think that was uh, political and that's not nice. And then uh, teams were chosen. Uh, in my era, teams were chosen uh, according to rankings of the players. Mm -hmm. It was not that bad. Um, and mm -hmm. I never really faced anything. I stayed away from all these things. My goal was to practice hard, play well, have good results, and be on the team. And that's exactly what happened to me. And um, I didn't face much politics against me as such. Um, so I was happy and I was lucky, I guess. Yeah, so you had your focus uh, very, very crystal clear. Yes. Uh, very good. Uh, tell me, Rupa, uh, I don't know about now, you know, how table tennis, whether it's remunerative and whether you earn a lot out of playing. I'm sure the players earn a lot. In those times, could it ever become a remunerative profession also? Like if you win a match, cash rewards, or if you play, you get salaried. So could it become a profession also, apart from being a passionate player? Uh, could you kindly repeat this question? I, uh, yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can yeah, hear you can now. You, yeah. I can hear you. I'm saying nowadays, the players are professional players. They get you know, remuneration, they get cash rewards, they get salaries, they get their fees for playing at such a high level. What, were the, what was the status of such you know, competitive of payments or fees during your era. Did you have such a system? Um, no, there was no such thing. We used to get trophies and cups and uh, those were our prizes, but uh, we never got uh, money or jobs or uh, we were not sponsored okay. by any companies. Um, uh, but uh -huh. nowadays, I know that there's a lot of money in table tennis and it, just Absolutely. like in any other sports. Uh, but um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very happy, actually, for, for the people that are playing now uh, because it helps. Mm -hmm. It d definitely helps because they can use that money to go and go outside India and stay for a bit in uh, some other places where table tennis is very well known and uh, they can hire a coach and play. So this money can come handy for the for the. Uh, generation uh, that's getting the money and everything else right now. I'm very happy for them. And they're actually playing very well. I'm so happy and so uh, I look at their games. I, I look at their uh, practice sessions and uh, so many tables, so many venues. I wish I was playing in this era. I would have played for maybe <laughs> 17, 18 hours. And, uh, you know, but I'm glad for the players now. Yes, there's a lot of money now, and uh, they're getting a lot of uh, facilities. They're uh, going abroad, uh, training, uh, but they're doing well. So the end result is very good. Correct. So, so 
So the has really upscaled the quality of the game. Pardon me. That means the inflow of money has upscaled the quality of the game. Yes, absolutely, because it helps. Money helps, because uh, if if you, I know one case. Uh, one girl was selected uh, in Indian team, but Indian uh, when we were some three girls were selected. I don't want to name the names. Three girls were selected for the Indian team. I was one of them. and uh, we all had to pay some money to uh, go to play uh, uh, in an international match so bengal table tennis came up with some money for me and another girl uh, who was on the team uh, got the money uh, from her uh, uh, from maharashtra but there was the third girl who did not get any money so she had to go back from the airport she had to go back because there was no money for her so imagine what money can do for you if there was Absolutely. money for her she could have gone uh, to that international match she could have played she could have uh, she could have achieved uh, great experiences and that would have helped her uh, her game but uh, yes uh, i'll i'll be 100% Uh, telling you that uh, money helps, and if your state or your country can help you, or any sponsors uh, can help you with money, then the players can use that money for good causes, and that helps your game. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you had a stunning career in Canada as well. You were the Canadian champion. You traveled all over the world. So maybe one fond memory, apart from you know one or two matches you have mentioned. but any other particular memory as the canadian champion yes uh, i played against uh, uh, heja lee who was world number 2 at the time uh, in in uh, in canada and i beat her and uh, it was it was very uh, it was a glorious victory for me uh, because i had beaten world number 3 in in calcutta park mira and this was world number 2 um, heja lee in in uh, in canada um, so i was um, i was happy to beat her but my my game went up so much my level of uh, improvement was uh, uh, very high and uh, therefore it was easy for me to beat or tackle uh, higher uh, graded players um, so hejali was one that i beat here and i was very happy about that okay your retirement came as a shock for everyone because you know you were on the top at that time really a, a champion uh how difficult was it to announce your exit and retirement from the world of table tennis yes um, i i was in canada when i retired fully from from uh, the table tennis um i played in india i got married i came here so that was the end of indian table tennis for me but when i came yeah. here i played i won the national championship and then my husband said husband prasad said that um, you should quit now while you're on top um so um i was also tired and he was more tired than i was so because we had to travel a lot <laughs> and we had to play I tournaments understand. every weekend and come back and uh, uh, tackle your job and everything it was overwhelming um but i i left table tennis uh, when i was number 1 of uh, canada it was very hard for me because uh, as uh, i started table tennis when i was very young and i continuously played until i gave up table tennis completely it was very hard it was my second nature to go to ymc in calcutta or to go to the club in uh, toronto and uh, when that stopped um, it felt funny um, but uh, but you know the relaxation came handy though correct correct that's what life is and you know on the top retiring exiting from the world of 
table tennis. She was a champion. She showed the way. She showed the path as very nicely Onrutosh said. Uh, we have, you know, many questions coming, you know, remarks coming. So I'll just go on to Shorbishta for the question and answer session. Thank you, Rupa. That was wonderful, you know, journeying with you on a flashback stage. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Mr. Ganguly. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. yes. Over to Shorbishta. You are watching Takes and Talks. Yes, viewers, you are watching Takes and Talks. And today we are here with the legendary table tennis player, Mrs. Rupa Banerjee. Now time for viewers question answer session. Ma'am, uh, we have uh, we've got a couple of questions for you. Some very interesting questions. Uh, all are not from um, the viewers who are watching us. They are not uh, all are not from sports background. So, but they want to know more about fitness. So, I hope the questions. Uh, I mean, the, like they are sending you, that like you will be able to guide them properly. Uh, the first question that we have. Well, uh, can you read it? No, or, I can't read it. Okay, okay. It's okay. too small. What, uh, what is your fitness regime as a sports enthusiast? Um, I think that uh, fitness is very important. Um, uh, your uh, not only fitness, your uh, not only your body fitness, but your discipline altogether. Mm -hmm. uh, you should really uh, work out. Uh, for at least two hours a day and that is what i think i would be able to do um two two hours some people can do more than that which is the more the better um that's for body fitness you have to have proper diet uh, i mean you can indulge once in a while but proper diet helps a lot um you should do running uh, running uh, is very good for uh, fitness um, and then your discipline and uh, you should be devoted and dedicated towards your game and uh, fitness is the key uh, even though table tennis you don't have to run as much as you do in tennis or other some other sports but even in table tennis you do have to have perfect body fitness so I, I would suggest that any player uh, that's uh, interested in uh, playing well should really concentrate on body fitness, discipline, and, uh, and, and practice hard. Practice the sport hard. The more you practice, the better you become. Yeah, right. absolutely. Practice makes you perfect, right? Perfect. There's a famous saying. Then, along with uh, physical fitness, there comes some mental fitness, you know, to uh, ability to cope up stress. Yes. So, our next question is related to stress. How uh, Rupa Banerjee, as a sports person, used to handle stress during her heydays? Um, actually, uh, I used to meditate a lot. I used okay. to pray because okay. I come from a very religious family. So I've seen a lot of prayers uh, happening at home. Um, so I used to pray every morning and every evening um, uh, before going to bed. Uh, so, you know, my meditation really helped me. Uh, th th this is a great help, but I don't know if it works for others. Yoga is very good to do. Uh, but uh, meditation is uh, number one. If I sit and meditate for an hour or hour and a half, that helps me and that helped me then and that helps me now. It's not only for table tennis tournaments uh, or to uh, de-stress uh, from table tennis tournaments. It's 
to distress from everything in life. Meditation is very good. Yes, meditation is really good. It helps you to uh, distress, distress yes. yourself. Uh, another question, ma'am, which is very closely linked with that. Uh, before any match, how Rupa Banerjee used to concentrate? I I used to concentrate by not talking to anybody. Um, <laughs> uh, I was generally a talkative girl, uh, but uh, but before the match, I used to keep quiet because uh -huh. I I wanted my concentration uh, intact. And uh, that's how I used to do, because normally I would say I would talk to everybody. I would uh, laugh and joke and everything. But before the match, I was 100 percent serious and uh, didn't talk to anybody. That and used to help and you to anybody, focus. Sorry. And if anybody talked to me too much, I used to just go away. I couldn't say, okay. don't talk to me now because I have a <laughs> tournament coming. But I used to just go away okay so that used to uh, not talking or keeping silent used to uh, help you to focus right yeah focus and concentrate and concentrate think, think about think about what am i supposed to do every player is different so when you right. play against a player you have to uh, think of the strategy right and um, so i used to keep quiet and think okay how am i going to tackle this player uh, she plays this way, she plays defensive, or she plays offensive, or she top spins. So how am I going to tackle this? Those are the things I used to think, but I used to be very quiet. I used to like to sit uh, aside and, and think of these things and prepare myself. That's great. So uh, concentration, not talking to anybody, meditation. Uh, those were the keys to your success. So uh, the next question may not be related to sports. As I said, we are uh, having we are having viewers from different uh, walks of life. But how these strategies, you know, these were your own strategies. How these used to help you uh, do better in life? You know, sports. I mean, we learn from everything. Yes, uh, it's the same thing. Like I said, that I I used to meditate, uh, not mm -hmm. because. Uh, not because of my sports, but I, I don't play sports now. I don't play table tennis now, but I still meditate. I still meditate. And uh, so, you know, it's not to do only about my sports, but it helps me in life, everyday life. Mm -hmm. So that's how it is. Everyday life, you have to think of meditation. You have to calm down and you know lead a good gentle life very true very true now moving on to uh some past days some of the golden days of rupa Banerjee. we have a question from there devyani bakchi chodhari wants to know uh any incident in your younger years that drew you to table tennis i pardon me Pardon? Please let us know any incident in your younger years that drew you to table tennis. Oh, yes. Any particular uh, incident? Yes. Uh, well, like I said, that I wanted to actually play table tennis. Uh, sorry, I actually wanted tennis. to play tennis. But mm -hmm. I was put to play table tennis by my mother because there were so many uh, siblings playing tennis. And uh, one, Robin Mukherjee, played uh, cricket. But I was, I was asked to play table tennis, and um, that really drew me to play table tennis because I was just put to play table tennis. We had no choice. We were so young at the time, very, very young. <laughs> and whatever we were told, whatever, uh, my mother bought me a table tennis bat, and that was my, uh, uh, you know, that was bigger than everything for me. And every okay. every day I would go to y, um, to the DKS and practice and practice and practice. So Great. we couldn't tell them that we could we couldn't tell um, um, I couldn't tell my mother or I couldn't tell uh, anybody else that I like to play tennis. Let me play tennis. But maybe it was 
for the best that I played table tennis. Mm, right, I didn't do. Right, right. The results were not too bad. That was a great, in fact. <laughs> thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you. The rest they say is a history. Is a famous saying, right? <laughs> you started playing, and the rest they say is a history. Yes, and and um, one thing I have to add is um, uh, this is uh, funny uh, that um, the the person who used to drive my dad's car. Uh, his name was Ganesh. Okay. And, and he used to call me Rupa. My name is actually Rupa Lee. And he used to mm -hmm. call me Rupa. So my mother objected one day and said, why do you call her Rupa? Because her name is so beautiful, Rupa Lee. And it's going to change to Rupa because you are keeping on calling. And he said to my mother, well, sister, I am Ganesh. And I'm saying that she will be famous one day with this name oh, Rupa. Great. great. Wow. Yeah. That's wonderful. I mean, a beautiful anecdote from your life. That's, you know. <laughs> um, okay, ma'am. Uh, now, who has been your biggest uh, inspiration? In, in India, before I got married, it was my uh, eldest brother because I lost my father uh, very oh. when I was only seven years old. Okay. So my eldest brother, Rajan Mukherjee, uh, used to inspire all brothers and sisters to play, play hard, play well, uh, do well, concentrate, do exercises, and whatever. Have you. So he was the biggest inspiration uh, at home. And when I got married and I came to Canada, my husband was extremely uh, encouraging towards my table tennis. He really used to travel with me everywhere. He used to uh, really shout, fight, you have to win, and this and that. He was, he was the biggest inspiration here. You have to play, you have to do this, you have to go to bed early uh, because tomorrow is your match. And now my son, he doesn't want me to leave table tennis world. He doesn't want me to play because you cannot play forever. My son, mm -hmm. Ronnie, Ronnie Banerjee, he's very interested in me to stay attached to table tennis. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, my husband and my son have been a big inspiration for me in this part of the world. Right. In fact, your family from this side and... and from that side both have been a great support for you yes i was very i was i should say that i'm blessed that i was very right uh, i got lovely support from from my family in india and my family in canada um, mm -hmm. that's why i didn't i didn't have too much trouble because mm -hmm. i used to play a lot i used to go away um, uh, travel a lot uh, my husband couldn't come when I was with me, when I was going uh, to another uh, city or something. I mean, uh, to Quebec and to Montreal, to Ottawa, those are not so bad. But if I had to go somewhere by by plane um, and he had to uh, do his job, uh, so he could take time off all the time uh, to be with me. Um, so, you know, like... It would have been hard if if I didn't get the support because I used to come home late. I used to mm -hmm. um, miss work here. So all these things was tolerated by my family. All these things were tolerated by my family in India. I used to come home very late. I used to come home very late in Canada because league matches in Canada starts very late at 7 o'clock. By the time you've played seven matches, uh, your the league championship is over. Uh, you're ca coming home. You're starting from the club at eleven thirty. By the time you come home, is about twelve thirty. Right. And my hum husband understood that because, also because he was a player himself, so he knows mm -hmm. that these things can happen, and these things are expected. Right. Great. So we are blessed because you are blessed with a great family. Thank you. Both India and Canada were blessed because you were blessed with a great family. I must Thank you say. so much. Thank you so much. 
Uh, Ma'am, moving on to the next question. Uh, now, uh, like moving on to the sports scenario. Uh, in India, uh, we still do not give importance to sports as much as to academics. Now, uh, what should we do in a school level to encourage more students to join sports? Actually, um, I'm not sure that that is 100% true because uh, when I go to India, I see little kids, hundreds mm -hmm. and hundreds of them. They're all motivated to play table tennis. And they're school students because they're school age, right? Mm -hmm. The very small, like, they were so small. And I was shocked to see Mr. Roby Chatterjee he trains uh, young students, uh, very young girls and boys at CLT in Calcutta. And uh, I was shocked to see the tournament, the entries in the tournaments. At our time, we never saw all these things. We only had uh, so many uh, women players and so many men players and so many junior yes. players mm -hmm. from both categories. But we didn't have so many, many children playing. So many, many children motivated and interested and eager to do well in table tennis. We didn't, I didn't see that. So I'm not 100% sure that it's not introduced, but I give credit to all the managers from my time because they used to send us to play exhibition matches far away from Calcutta to expose the game. So, okay. so, so a lot of people saw us playing. A lot of people were motivated. They were interested. They wanted to play mm -hmm. like us. So a lot of children saw us playing. And today, so many children are playing. And they are in good hands with uh, Mr. Roby Chatterjee. And... Uh, I think I think they are doing very well, and I think they are uh, exposed to table tennis quite a bit. Uh, there's another question in connection to that. How has the coaching scenario uh, for table tennis has uh, how has it developed over years? Uh, I think coaching is much better now. Uh, mm -hmm. At our time, there was no coaching at all. There was only one month coaching before we were playing for Bengal okay. at the Nationals. But now it has changed. Almost everybody has a coach or a group of people have a coach. And the coaches are doing well, training them. And that's why we have such great results today. Our men are doing very well. Our women are doing very well. The juniors are doing very well. There's a world number four junior. Uh, her name is Swastika Ghosh. She, uh, I think her father used to live in, um, in Calcutta before, but now in Bombay. So um, uh, she's world number four junior. Uh, like that, uh, we have a lot of uh, coaching and training. In Swastika's case, her father is the coach. He's very, very interested in table tennis. Mm -hmm. uh, his name is San Sandeep. So... Uh, like that, everybody has a coach, which is good. Mm -hmm. You have to have mm -hmm. a coach who can tell you, you're doing this thing wrong. Don't do it this way. Do it right. the other way. We mm -hmm. didn't have that at our time. But, you know, I'm always happy for the next generation or mm -hmm. generation after. I'm very happy that they're doing well. They have a lot of coaches now. They have a lot of venues that they can practice. If they want, they can practice 17, 18 hours. And uh, which is good for their games. Right. I mean, they are getting coaching at personal level, as what you're saying, right? To correct the mistakes, wherever, uh, the, whatever weaknesses they are having, they are getting coaching at personal level. That's really good. Yes, very good. But I also mm -hmm. think there's national coach there. Um, mm -hmm. I think that uh, uh, Mr. Prabhupada Mitra uh, was... Um, opening a place called SAI, um, uh, SAI, SAI um, in Calcutta, where there was a, a foreign coach. Uh, I think he was 
employed there to look after all the players. Uh, but I think Sai has closed, uh, closed now. But um, I, I think foreign coaches are coming to India and coaching uh, generally the Indian team. So not only that people have their own coaches, but they mm -hmm. also have national coach, which national is so great. So which great. is really great. Yes. That is really great uh, because you do need a good coach. You do need mm -hmm. uh, pl places where you can go and practice your heart out. I mean, if I could play for 17 hours, I would. But we didn't have a place to play. We mm -hmm. only had YMCA. And some days we were playing for 20 minutes. But that's then. And now it's different. Mm -hmm. well, that way, infrastructure has developed a lot, you must say. But that's why... That's why I said earlier to Mr. Ganguly that uh, the managers did what they could, but there was not a place that they could dedicate right. for the right. international right. players that we could go and practice and practice and practice for hours together. Right, which is really they, they tried. They tried their best, but it was just not possible. I don't blame mm. them. They've done mm -hmm. good, good work. They've done very mm -hmm. good work, but it just wasn't there for us. Uh, so since last one and a half years, we have been uh, going through a very tough time, very trying times. So of course, the sports world has also suffered a lot. Yes. So of course, we will. Uh, it's quite obvious that we will have question related to that. Uh, Dear Mrs. Banerjee, uh, what would you think about the Olympic plays in the times of Corona, <laughs> COVID times? Yes. Well, I was surprised uh, that the teams are going. Uh, they're, they're, I read uh, some of the controversies that it, uh, there shouldn't be a to Tokyo Olympic. Uh, but uh, I guess they're taking their safety measures and mm -hmm. the teams are going. Uh, but I hope that they're, they've got their shots, uh, COVID shots. Uh, mm. uh, I've got mine, my husband has got his, my son has got his. But Olympic players, they should be very careful uh, because uh, it's not good to go to Olympics and then to fall sick there. Right. And then right. when you fall sick, you infect other people. Mm. So... Uh, everyone should be vaccinated, and uh, I, I, I'm sure that they will be before they. I, I, I think that they cannot. Uh, I, I, I'm sure that they won't be allowed to go to represent their countries unless they are vaccinated. Required vaccination right. is important too. Like the authorities should be more stringent on that. Very yes, absolutely, absolutely, and I'm sure they are. Because it mm -hmm. is to their interest. It's everybody's interest. Because course, if I fall yeah. sick, my mm -hmm. husband will fall you sick. You may infect my others, right. Sick, my son will fall sick. So mm -hmm. in that case, uh, in the level of uh, Olympics or the level of uh, Bengal uh, table tennis or India table tennis, I think everybody should be more aware uh, of what is needed. Vaccination is very right. important. And they Very should important. be vaccinated when they go. And the masks, the masks should be put on. I came mm -hmm. down here and I've got my mask next to me. Mask is mm -hmm. very important. Social distancing is very important. Of course, we didn't see that when uh, the uh, Euro Cup was uh, uh, like the, the England team won uh, day before yesterday. And there was a huge crowd on the streets of uh, England, uh, London. Um, so they were not bothering about social distancing. They were so happy. Um, but I think that is very important: social distancing and and mask wearing and and um, vaccination. These three things very are very important. Very good. So with this, we have come to an end of the viewers' uh, question answer session. Mr. Ganguly is waiting backstage. Let me add him to the screen. Yes, Mr. Ganguly. Yeah, I was all ears and, you know, hearing out the questions. And as Rupa very nicely said,
about that Olympics question. Now we are managing between COVID shots and table tennis shots, it seems. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. COVID shots and table tennis shots. But COVID it was, shots are uh, only two. COVID shots are yeah. only two. But the table tennis <laughs> shots are so many. So it's Plenty, easy yeah. to take the COVID shots. Correct. Correct. Uh, we really are going back, a, you know, like with a lot of inspiration, hearing about your remarkable journey. And still, you know, when I close my eyes, I can hear the echo from the galleries, fight, Rupa, fight. You know, when you were journeying to become a champion, what a marvelous and an amazing journey it has been. You have been the champion in the national levels, also in the international levels, and also the Canadian champion. Fantastic. One last question to the champion, winning or losing or both are important as a sports yes. person. What do you Absolutely. think? Absolutely true. Absolutely true. Because if you keep winning, then you don't know how far you want to go even more. Because you feel relaxed. Oh, I win all the time. But once in a while to lose it puts you back to square one and you think no 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 there are other players that are good too they can beat you too so you have to play more harder so that gives you the incentive to play harder to practice harder to have more body fitness so you can move better so uh, you know discipline and life so that you can perform well when you're playing matches so winning and losing both have their uh, uh, good and bad but of course you don't want to lose but to some extent once in a while if you lose it really helps you to win in the long run lovely what a beautiful answer as you said one if you lose it really helps you towards win and uh, winning motivates you inspires you but losing makes you introspect, do a self-audit, and maybe become better. Fantastic. That was the story of a champion with Rupa from Toronto. Thank you so much, Rupa, for sparing your time. We salute the champ you were, and still you're a champion, inspiring all of us. Over to Shormishta to sum it up. Thank you Thank so you, much from the Takes and Talks team. Thank, Thank you, you so Mr. much. Thank you, Mr. Ganguly. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am, for being our guest today, for enriching us, for enriching our show with your great words, with your inspiring words. I'm sure our viewers will, uh, they have also enjoyed the show a lot. And uh, with this, we wish you a great health. We pray for your well-being. We wish you all the happiness in life. Hope you have enjoyed being with us today. I have, I have thoroughly enjoyed. Thank you so much, Miss Chakraborty. You are a very diligent uh, uh, worker. Thank there. you, my friend. Thank you, and uh, <laughs> uh, my best wishes to all of you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you uh, So before we end, dear viewers, as I always say, Takes and Talks is your very own platform. So if you have any such inspiring story to share, please do not forget to contact us. For details, please take a quick look at the next video. Thank you very much.